Good morning. My name is Andrea Jenkins. I'm the president of the Minneapolis City Council. And I'm going to call to order this regular meeting for Thursday, February 23rd. Ma'am, before we begin this meeting today, I would like to take a moment of silence and tribute to our former neighborhood and community relations director, David Rubador, who passed away this past week, February 14th. Rest in peace, my friend. Um, thank you all. I will ask the clerk to call the roll to verify that we do have the presence of a quorum. Councilmember Shugtai. Present. Councilmember Chavez. Present. Councilmember Ellison is absent. Councilmember Vita. Present. Councilmember Rainville. Present. Councilmember Goodman. Councilmember Wansley. Present. Councilmember Johnson is absent. Councilmember Osman. Present. <coughs> Councilmember Payne. Present. Councilmember Koski. Present. Vice President Palmasano. Present. President Jenkins. Present. There are 11 members present. Let the record reflect that we do have a quorum. Next, we have the adoption of our agenda. Colleagues, the agenda for today's meeting is before us. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Are there any amendments to the agenda? Uh, Council Member Chavez. Council President Jenkins, I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda to include under the order of unfinished business a motion proposing to rescind Council Action 2023A-0072 relating to the contract with Rachel Contracting LLC for the Hiawatha Public Works Phase 2 demolition project. Yes. Yes. No demo! No demo! No demo! Uh, colleagues, we have a motion Second. for us. And a second. Um, is there any discussion? Councilmember Wansley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I would also like to make a motion to uh, add uh, to the agenda under unfinished business a uh, policy resolution adopting. I'm sorry, Councilmember. We yeah. already have a motion and a proper second. Um, I thought you were going to speak to the motion that we just no. had a second to. Second, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. So we need to take up this motion, and then we can take up your motion. Sounds good. Um, so if there's no discussion on the Chavez motion, uh, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. No. Councilmember Rainville. No. Councilmember Goodman. No. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Johnson is absent. Councilmember Osma. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Nay. Vice President Palmasano. No. President Jenkins. Aye. There are seven ayes and five nays. That carries, and so the amend the agenda will be amended to include the Chavez motion. Are there any other motions? Councilmember Wansley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I also would like to make a motion to add um, an order of new business, a policy resolution adopting principles in support of the First Amendment rights of environmental activists. Second. Um, is there any discussion? I just wanted to... Oh, Put myself in queue. Um, Wansley. Thank you. So this is an item that I and several of my colleagues brought forward several weeks ago. We followed, you know, the necessary procedures to have this on the agenda. Uh, we also worked with staff across the enterprise to create this version, which everyone received in their inboxes on Tuesday. So I do want to thank Clerk Carl, uh, as well as the city attorney's office for assisting with getting this to the final draft. 
here for consideration today. Um, given the events of the last few weeks with the environmental disaster in Ohio, a forest defender being murdered in Atlanta, and the repression of peaceful protests in East Phillips, this matter is more urgent you know, than ever. So this is a policy resolution stating that the city affirms the First Amendment rights of environmental activists for us to vote on today. This is also consistent with prior council action supporting environmental justice protests and indigenous resistance. This is also a continuation of the city taking a strong stance in support of environmental justice. Just for instance, the city took formal opposition to the Line 3 pipeline and specifically stated that the city of Minneapolis opposes the construction of the Enbridge Energy Line 3 tar stands oil pipeline and calls on every elected leader with the authority to stop its construction to do so immediately. So this resolution falls in alignment with has policy statements that this body has taken up in support, especially in Black History Month, where our theme for this month is Black resistance and Black resilience, knowing that whatever fruits of change, the fact that I even get to sit on this dais, is because someone had to protest years ago, 50 years ago, and we want to honor that same tradition that got us the power that we hold today. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Wansley. And um, seeing no further discussion, uh, clerk, please call the roll on this motion. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. No. Councilmember Rainville. No. Councilmember Goodman. No. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Johnson is absent. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Nay. Vice President Palmasano. No. President Jenkins. Nay. There are six ayes and six nays. That motion fails. Um, and so, is there any other? I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. No, I still, I'm still on the. I'm still on the, the chat. Councilmember Chavez is also in the queue for his second speech. I apologize, Madam President. Um, Councilmember Chavez. Me to run, one of me to run speaker management and under voting. Thank you, Member Chavez. Clerk Carl, thank you, Council President. I would like to make a second motion, and I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda to include under the order of new business a legislative directive related to the High Water Maintenance Facility Campus Expansion Project to end this story once and for all. So, I need a second. 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 Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. No. Councilmember Rainville. No. Councilmember Goodman. No. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Johnson is absent. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Nay. Vice President Palmasano. No. President Jenkins. Aye. There are seven ayes and five nays. That carries, and the uh, and will be added to the agenda. Now I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries and the agenda is adopted. The next item of business is acceptance of the minutes from our regular meeting on February 9th and our special meeting on February 17th. May I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and those minutes have been accepted. Next, we have the referrals of Petitions, communications, and reports to the proper committees. May I have that motion, please? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. 
Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Kosky. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and um, the next order of business is reports from our standing committees, beginning with the Business Inspections, Housing, and Zoning Committee. The report will be presented by the Chair, Council Member Goodman. Thank you, Madam President. The Business Inspections, Housing, and Zoning Committee is bringing seven items forward for approval today. Item number one are appointments to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Uh, I'll note that these are appointments for Peter Ingram, as well as Ann Callahan, Sally Gans Korsh, and Annie Wang. Item number two is granting an appeal for a variance at 3501-3515 Zenith Avenue South. Item three are the liquor license approvals and four are the liquor license renewals. Item number five is the Minnesota Housing Impact Fund grant for the development of homeownership housing. Item number six is homeownership works indirect subsidy procedural change. These are changes we're making to the process in order to make it easier. And item number seven is the rezoning of the Upper Harbor Terminal. With that, I'll move items one one through seven for approval this morning. Thank you, Councilmember Goodman. Councilmember Goodman has moved that committee's report. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries, and that report is adopted. <coughs> we have a report from the Committee of the Whole. That report will be presented by its chair, Council Vice President Palmasano. Thank you, Madam President. At our Committee of the Whole meeting on February 21st, we have a legislative department update authored by myself and Council Member Wansley that directs the city clerk and auditor to report to our government structure subcommittee uh, regularly starting May 9th on how to define, clarify, and strengthen the professional support provided by our respective offices to ensure effective support for the city council's official legislative policy making and oversight functions. In addition to that is the motion that is before you on the dais. Um, it is goes along with this and it is exactly what I spoke about at Committee of the Whole to um, ask for a joint meeting with the Charter Commission's Government Structure Work Group to identify and pr prioritize any future potential or recommended amendments to the Charter that will be needed to fully implement our government structure. I move both of those items. Council Vice President Palmasano has moved that committee's report. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Wansley. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Um, thank you. That report is accepted and um, next we have um, a report from our policy and government oversight committee presented by the chair council member ellison thank you madam president the policy and government oversight committee is bringing forward 19 items that it is recommending for approval one is the passage of an ordinance related to the appointed position in the city attorney's office managing attorney of implementation Two is adopting, uh, fi uh, adopting fines for additional appointed positions in the Information Technology Department, Director, IT, uh, Director of IT Services. Three is passage of a resolution for gift acceptance for the National Environmental Health Science and Protection Accreditation Council for travel and lodging expenses. Four is a passage of a resolution for gift acceptance from various entities for travel and lodging for health department staff. Five is accepting a federal fiscal recovery fund for shelter grant for sanitation services. Six is accept accepting the low bid for Minneapolis Convention Center video surveillance system upgrade project. Seven is accepting the low bid for the Upper Harbor Terminal Dowling Avenue North construction project. Eight is accepting the low bid for signals, storm, sewer, and curb ramp improvement project. Nine is authorizing contracts with public art project managers for the 2023 through 2026 public art manager pool. 
10 is authorizing contracts for vehicle auction services. 11 is authorizing contract amendment with One Neck IT Solutions LLC for providing outsourced managed IT services. 12 is authorizing contract amendment with Data Net Systems Corporation to provide hosting and professional services for the LIMS and CRM applications. 13 is authorizing contract amendment with Formation Studio LLC for repairs to the ceiling above the suspended lobby sculpture in the new public service building. 14 is authorizing contract amendment with Hennepin Healthcare System Inc. for teen parent em employment and training services. 15 is authorizing master contracts for 2023 through 2025 for eligible provi provider health services. 16 is authorizing master contract amendment with Tree Trust for environmental tree services. Uh, 17 is authorizing master contract amendment with the link for juvenile supervision for the juvenile supervision center and uh, 18 is approving legal settlement uh, that's uh, Hil uh, Hillary Richard versus the city of Minneapolis and Oscar Mas uh, Masias and 19 is approving a legal settlement the city of Minneapolis versus Daniel Payne and para uh, with that I'll move approval of the committee report thank you councilmember Ellison Councilmember Ellison has moved the Pogo Committee report. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Wansley. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to make a comment on uh, item number 20, another settlement. Um, I just want to name for the public that this settlement is yet another instance of uh, police permanently wounding someone during the summer of 2020. It's two and a half years later and taxpayers are still footing the bill for police misconduct every single day. Um, I want to raise that because, you know, in the coming months, we will have serious opportunities to uh, systematically address police misconduct through the MDHR consent decree that's coming. Um, but we'll also have an opportunity to address this through the police contract that is also supposed to be expiring this year. Um, those are two huge tools that we have in front of us to make sure that MPD does not continue uh, this pattern and practice of violating human rights and that you know, prevents taxpayers from having to pay for uh, the misconduct of our police department when they do so. So I just wanted to put that on public record. Thank you, Councilmember Wansley. Um, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye on um, all items except uh, number 18. Okay, 18 or 19? Sorry, sorry, my bad. Nice. Uh, 19. 19. 19. Uh, Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries that report is adopted. Our next uh, report is the Public Health and Safety Committee, which will be presented by the Chair, Councilmember Vital. Thank you, Madam President. The Public Health and Safety Committee is bringing forward two items. Item one is considering the mayor's nomination of Damone Chaplin to the appointed position of Commissioner of Health for a term ending January 2026. This item was sent forward without recommendation. And item two is accepting a grant from the Food and Drug Administration to create videos in three languages on hand washing. I'll move for approval of both items on the committee's report. Thank you, Councilmember Vitao. Councilmember Vitao has moved that committee's report. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm going to move the uh, move approval of the of item two as recommended by the Public Health and Safety Committee, and I will pull item one for further discussion. Sorry. Okay, Councilmember Vitao has moved item number two on the Public Health and Safety Committee report and pulled item number one and for further discussion. She moved two and three. There were three items? Oh, is it? No, it's only two. There's only two items. There's only two items. The first item is the consideration of the mayor's nomination as the chair mentioned. The second item relates to uh, the FDA grant. So there's those two items from PHS being reported. So as stated, uh, Councilmember Vital moved item number two and requested to have a discussion on item number one. Clerk, please call the roll on item number two. Councilmember uh, Shagtai. 
Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. Aye. Councilmember Rainville. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osmond. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Vice President Palmisano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes on item number two. That carries and item number two is adopted and I will now return to Councilmember Vita. Thank you, Madam President. Um, item number one was moved forward without recommendation. Uh, we did have a public hearing for Mr. Damone Chaplin. I will not be supporting the nomination today, so I wanted to pull the item for that reason. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Vitao. Uh, is there... Any discussion, Councilor Palmasano? Thank you, Madam President. Um, we do need a motion on this, and I appreciate and respect Councilmember Vita's choice to not want to move this forward. I will put forward a motion for approval of um, the appointment of Damone Chaplin for Commissioner of Health. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember, uh, Council Vice President Palmasano has moved item number one of the public. <laughs> Health and Safety Committee, which is the nomination of um, Damone Chaplin to the appointed position of Commissioner of Health for term ending January 26th. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Shugtai. Aye. Councilmember Chavez. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Vita. No. Councilmember Rainville. No. Councilmember Goodman. No. Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Aye. Council Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are nine ayes and three nays. That carries, and item number one will be forwarded to um, the proper committee. Or I, item number one was just passed, and so we'll submit that to the mayor for his consideration and approval. Item number one. My apologies. Um, we have dispensed with the Public Health and Safety Committee report, and um, we will now uh, move to the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee, and that report will be presented by the Vice Chair, Councilmember Koski. Thank you, Madam President. The Public Works and Infrastructure Committee is bringing forward eight items uh, for recommended uh, for approval. Number one is approving the Fourth Avenue South Street resurfacing project. Number two is approving the Bloomington Avenue South Street resurfacing project. Number three is approving the Fowell East and Northeast residential street resurfacing project. Number four is approving the 37th Avenue Northeast Street reconstruction project. Number five is approving the list of routes and dates for the 2023 Minneapolis open streets. Number six is authorizing a subgrant agreement with the Division of Homeland Security for the Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities Program. Number seven is authorizing acceptance of a gift of a Carbon X carbon capture unit from Centerpoint Energy to pilot emerging greenhouse gas emissions reduction technology. And number eight is approving a legislative directive providing a high level analysis of potential city led sidewalk snow and ice removal programs that could be fully implemented by winter of 2027. I move approval of all eight of these items. Thank you, um, Councilmember Koski. And Councilmember Koski has moved that committee's report. Uh, is there any discussion? Councilmember Wansley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so I'm really excited to bring forward the uh, item number eight, which is the municipal sidewalk plowing analysis with Councilmember Chuck Tai. Um, this has been a priority of my office since we started this term, and we've had a lot of intentional conversations with community groups, residents, city staff, and local and national experts on climate resilience. And now that we're experiencing a record-breaking blizzard, I want to emphasize that moving forward um, with this now is part of ensuring that our city is ready to respond to the coming impacts of climate change. Um, I know that while there is widespread support on advancing a municipal sidewalk plowing program, there is still understandably a lot of questions. Um, and I just want to take a quick moment to just go over the legislative directive and explain some of the rationale 
be behind some of the ideas. Um, so this directive is meant to guide a policy conversation of how the city can advance a municipal sidewalk plowing program. This has been a conversation that predates myself and many of my colleagues that's here today, um, but I'm excited to continue this work with the council and have a year long conversation of how we can potentially roll <laughs> out a phased out program. Um, it's also an opportunity to thoroughly discuss the opportunities and challenges that will come with the new program and have an honest conversation with our constituents about how they would like the city to move forward. So after holding many conversations about this with our community members and constituents, there seemed to be collective agreement that, you know, we need to move forward in this directive and also especially focusing on priori um, prioritizing the pedestrian priority network, um, which I would love to see, you know, take precedence in a phase out. But either way, I'm looking forward to this analysis coming back in June so my colleagues and, and I can spend hopefully a lovely summer engaging the community on next steps and how they envision a potential program moving forward. But in the meantime, I also look forward to the monthly updates on progress regarding this directive uh, from our public work staff. Um, and having these continuous conversations with uh, our constituents and community members. So I just wanted to share that. And again, thank you, Council Member Chuck Ty, for all of your labor of love and work around this too. <clears throat> thank you, Council Member Wansley. Any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Chuck Ty. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vitoff. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Wansley. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. It carries and that report is adopted. That completes the reports from our standing committees. Next is the notice of ordinance introductions. Um, there are two items as listed on the printed agenda. Number one, council members Chavez and Payne notice to amend the housing maintenance code to amend provisions related to the prohibition of skateboard ramps or structures. And then number two is um, council member Johnson's notice to amend three areas of the code, health and sanitation, housing maintenance, and water, stormwater, and sanitary sewers to reflect amendments to code citations related to the water and sewer code revision that was adopted last year. Those notices are hereby given and no further action is required at this time. Um, next we have our introduction and referrals calendar. First pursuant to notice, Council Member Osmond will be introducing and giving first reading to the subject matter of an ordinance amending Title 13 to the code to amend regulations to provide a limited license spacing exemption for tobacco dealer licenses for qualifying commercial malls which will be referred to the business inspections and zoning, um, I'm sorry, business inspections, housing and zoning committee in the next cycle. Second, pursuant to notice, council members Chuck Ty, Ellison and Osmond will be introducing and giving first reading to the subject matter of an ordinance amending title 15 of the code to amend the noise violation exemption related to sounds associated with religious worship, which will be referred to the Public Health and Safety Committee in the next cycle. And finally, pursuant to notice, Council Member Goodman will be introducing and giving first reading to the subject matter of 11 code amendments, all related to the land use rezoning study to implement policies in conjunction with Minneapolis 2040 which will be referred to the Business Inspections, Housing, and Zoning Committee in the next cycle. Are there any questions from my um, colleagues? And I see Council Member Chavez is first in queue. Uh, thank you, Council President Jenkins. This is in regards to the notice of introduction. Council Member Payne, Reg Services, and I are working on amending our current skateboard ramps instructions ordinance relating to the prohibition of skateboard ramps or structures. 
Our core ordinance says that they are noisy, ugly, and harm property values. So we are working to make changes that will ensure there's exceptions to this ordinance, to this prohibition, to make sure that it does not apply to non-permanent movable skateboard ramps for four feet or higher. Uh, we see this as a public benefit that can also help our youth in regards to making sure that they have things to do um, in regards to doing things that we don't want them to be doing. So um, if Councilmember Payne wants to make a few comments as well, I think we're both working on this together and making sure that we can expand this exception. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Palmasano. I'll yield to Councilmember Payne because it's on the same topic, if that's all right with you. That's fine. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Vice President Palmasano. Yeah, I'm just excited to work on this. This is part of um, what I think is really important for us to do is just be in touch with what's going on in the community today and, you know, take an interrogate, uh, interrogate all of our old ordinances that are maybe not treating our community the way that it needs to treat them. So skateboarding is a pretty mainstream activity nowadays, and I think our ordinances should reflect that. Uh, Councilmember Palmasano. Thank you. In addition to um, some of the other work going on in these other codes in our city, I did want to just make mention um, about the introduction and referral calendar, Goodman, Councilmember Goodman's numbers 3 through 11. Um, we have received an awful lot of outreach, my office, some of the other council offices, and the mayor's office in regards to a sauna establishment in my ward. And I just want to make sure that people understand that their use and ability to operate in defined corridors throughout, throughout our city is covered in this land use rezoning study. Um, I think that we want to appreciate and uplift health and wellness businesses in our community. Those health and wellness establishments can really enhance our city and we're also going to need to figure out how to do this in environmentally sensitive ways so that Effort is in progress, but the zoning change and the removal of the language um, from the 1960s as people are reaching out to us um, will be removed in the land use rezoning study changes. And thank you to Councilmember Goodman for sponsoring that work. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Goodman. Thank you, Madam President. I'm sorry to have to talk about this again, but I do think that there's some confusion and I'm hoping to be able to clear up the confusion by these comments. In the past, you had a zoning category like R1, very low density to R6, very high density, commercial one, commercial low density to commercial three, commercial high density. All of that has been replaced with a new system, a more progressive system called the built form zoning system. And as a result, the 2040 plan already adopted the zoning categories throughout the city. What this portion that we're moving forward now on is what would be allowed within those uses. So what, where can you first have a tobacco shop? Where can you first have a coffee shop? Um, it is uh, not an opportunity to revisit the interior one, two, and three, the commercial one, two, three, and four designations. Should there be concerns about where these designations have been put within the code, what would be required is a comp plan amendment. And we know what that process is, and I know a lot of the people in the room actually know what that process is, because there was an effort by some of the folks at Little Earth to rezone an R2 property uh, it actually transferred into an interior one property, and we had to do a comp plan amendment to allow this food system to happen, and that required a lot of work on behalf of the community as well as the council members and the planning staff. It also required nine votes, and we did it earlier in the year. Uh, we also have had other comp plan amendments. There was one in Council Member Rainville's ward on Van Buren. I'm sure everyone's aware of that. Um, same kind of thing. So when we bring these issues forward now, this is not about where interior one, two, and three is located or commercial one, two, and three. It's about what uses would be allowed within those categories. And so I see everyone's already glazing over. Um, you are likely to be getting calls and comments from people who are unhappy with the base zone 
zoning that has already been approved, and this process is not to revisit that base zoning. The process is to figure out what uses would be allowed. And I'll remind everyone that triplexes are an allowed use within the interior one. There is no lower zoning than that. And what we're trying to figure out now is what would be allowed within the other districts. This is going to go through a process. The staff have already extended the public comment period for another 30 days. The biz committee, by virtue of not having a zoning and planning committee, is going to be taking this up. And I just want to be able to provide as much um, information to everyone as possible as we move through this process. If you have questions, uh, feel free to reach out to Council Members Rainville, myself, and Osman, who have been working collaboratively with staff on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Goodman. Uh, seeing no further discussion, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on these <coughs> introductions. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. Aye. Council Member Rainville. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Wansley. Aye. Council Member Osmond. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Aye. Vice President Palmasano. Aye. President Jenkins. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries and those ordinances are referred to committees in the next cycle as indicated on the agenda. Our next order of business is new business. And um, that would be uh, Council Member Chavez's motion. Um, Madam President. Uh, if I can just redirect us a little bit, we actually mm -hmm. have a motion that got added, the two from Chavez that are in your packet. The first one is unfinished business, and my apologies for having that out of order. Unfinished business comes before new business. So the action that was approved in adopting the agenda at the beginning of the meeting was to add under the order of unfinished business a proposal that would rescind prior council action 2023A0072. This is related to the contract with Rachel Contracting LLC for the Hiawatha Public Works Phase Two demolition project. The action is shown at the bottom uh, of that page that amends it. So this is a motion by Council Member Chavez essentially to rescind and terminate that prior contract that was authorized by Council for that scope of work related to the Hiawatha Public Works campus on city-owned property at parcels located at 1860 28th East Street East and 2717 Longfellow Avenue South. Thank you, uh, Kurt Carl, and uh, for that um, explanation. And so we are currently on unfinished business and we have a motion by Council Member Chavez. Um, and. Um, Second. Um, and I believe. Is there any discussion? Council Member Chavez. Thank you, Council President Jenkins. I want to begin by acknowledging my East Phillips neighbors and Little Earth residents who showed up today asking for help. East Phillips is nearly 77% people of color, and they decided to come here today to fight for their lives during a blizzard and during work time hours. There has been tension around this project for years, and it's clearly stated that my community is in fear and is rightfully frustrated. I am using the last two legislative tools at my disposal to protect my community, the community I was born and raised in as a child of East Phillips, two blocks away from Little Earth. I wear that on my chest loud and proud. When my community hurts, I hurt. And when my community cries in fear, I cry in fear. And when my community asks for help, I show up and help. Excuse me, council the, member. Um, can we just have one conversation, please? The recent occupation, 50 police officers being directed to arrest my community, and the tensions rising in the Ninth Ward it is clear that we need to end this before my people get hurt. I was present at the location on Tuesday where the community was at. I was talking to my friends, my colleagues, my community members, and even the Minneapolis Police Department to help reduce the amount of officers that were there at the community site. I inherited this project from a former predecessor of mine, 
and the last few days taught me that we need to get back to the source of where we no longer align with the community. I think that today we can correct our wrongs and move forward, and this first vote is to end the racial contracting to allow for the rescinding of the action. And I, if my colleagues want to speak to that, uh, they're on cue. And uh, Councilmember Wansley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so over the past eight years, the community has repeatedly urged the city to take their needs and perspective seriously. In the last year that I've been in office, I and some of, some of my colleagues under the leadership of Council Member Chavez here have repeatedly amplified the need to address residents' fears about the long-term health impacts of the demolition and of the city's proposed Hiawatha pro project. We have done so because we trust residents and we believe in their needs and their rights. We have also done so because we know that Minneapolis residents have a long, powerful history of exercising our First Amendment rights when faced with oppressive and harmful behavior by the city. The community has repeatedly and clearly have expressed that they do not support the city's Hiawatha expansion. It is confusing how any city leader could think that, you know, by moving forward with the demolition without the consent of the community could end in anything other than protest. And this body has supported communities, especially those of color, in exercising their First Amendment rights to resist state-sanctioned violence, as well as violence enacted by big business. And though this body just voted to formally not recognize my resolution supporting the First Amendment rights of environmental activists, I do want to remind you all that in 2021, Council passed a resolution expressing solidarity with indigenous resistance to the Dakota Access Pipeline, where Council requested the mayor and police chief to keep Minneapolis police from participating in the Northern Lights Task Force. And while the last council formally, you know, requested <clears throat> not having police involved as it relates to protests addressing environmental injustice, this council instead has chosen a path of silence, complacency, and apathy in response to our most marginalized communities' de demands of a just and more humane project right here in their own backyards, not in North Dakota, but right here in Minneapolis and East Phillips. But this vote to terminate the contract gives this body another opportunity to both recognize and stop the harm we're imposing on our East Phillips residents. With this motion, we can ensure that working class residents in East Phillips and all across the city do not have to battle harsh winter conditions, like we're legit in the middle of a snowstorm, to protest and demand that this council actually honor the value and humanity of Native lives, of Black lives, and of Brown lives. And for those reasons, I will be supporting Councilmember Ch uh, Chavez's motion to terminate and rescind the contract for demolition today. <laughs> Councilmember Osmond. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Madam uh, President. Uh, as someone who has supported the city redevelopment plan and uh, city expansion plan for this site, someone who voted uh, for the city plan, I tell you today, I will not be supporting the city taking over this site. I. I have learned, I have listened, and this community are hurting. My community is hurting. The indigenous people deserve respect and their voice to be heard. I appreciate Council Member uh, Chavez for bringing this amendment forward to rescind and terminate the project. Back in March 2022, we had eight council members uh, who favor voting this site and uh, giving uh, the development rights for the East Phillips. Mayor veto it. Well, today you have the override veto and my, my, my vote. If those council members are willing to come back their plan on March, you will have a nine council members to move forward and give back this land to the community. Woo! 
I stand with you, Council Member Chavez, and I stand with you in the community, and it's okay. You can learn. You can learn. You can change your vote. It's the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Please, sir, can we hear from Council Member Chuck Tai? Thank you, Madam President. Um, we've taken a lot of votes on this issue just in this term, and it, it's come up for discussion for votes um, a, a lot of times over the last year. Um, and each time, um, I've seen only a handful of Little Earth residents in the room um, asking us to do something and today, the entire chambers are filled with residents, indigenous residents, residents from Little Earth. That's the first time we've seen something like this happen um, in, in my time here. And that means something to me. I hope it means something to everyone else who's sitting on this dais and making decisions on this community's behalf. Um, on Tuesday, I spent a, a lot of time in the evening with Councilmember Chavez um, in the East Phillips neighborhood uh, at the Roof Depot site um, and um, saw the, the interactions between, um, between the city and the community and had a chance to, um, to talk with some of, the, some of the residents who were arrested um, for, for being at that, at that site. Um, you know, it, it is very clear to me that this is a decision that this community does not want, and it's one that is leading to more mistrust between the city and an already marginalized community. It's leading to increased violence, um, and, and I worry about how much that increases um, the, the more we continue down this path. So I am really thankful to Council Member Chavez for finding, um, finding the last tool to, to stop this, uh, this demolition, and, and I'm proud to support you in this effort today. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Chuck Tai. Council Member Palmasano. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like our city attorney to speak to the impact of what rescinding this contract would mean for our city. <clears throat> Please, can we hear from the city attorney? Sure, so uh, Council President, Council Vice President, members of the committee, uh, the, the council does have the authority to, term to order the termination you know, of the contract. It's a contract that you did a vote to approve. You can, can vote to uh, order its termination. It is a fully executed contract. So as a result of that, um, the, the contract's termination provisions would control. Um, this is a situation where it is not a for-cause termination. It's a termination without cause. And um, the contract terms would provide that the contractor would be entitled to receive payment for the work executed. Um, and then costs incurred by reason of the termination along with reasonable overhead and profit on the work not executed. I can't give you a dollar figure for what that might be, but, but there would be um, payments to be made as a consequence of, of termination of the contract. Uh, thank you, Council Member. I mean, thank you, City Attorney. Uh, is there any further discussion on the Chavez motion? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Uh, I'm Madam sorry, President? Council Member Wansley. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just want to speech. Oh, I just want to put on the record as community has emphasized, you cannot put a price on black and brown and native lives. That's just simple. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, can you please clarify uh, the voting process for this motion. 
Yes, Madam President, this is a motion to rescind and terminate a contract previously authorized. So it's a motion calling up a prior action. Uh, the vote to approve that then requires a two-thirds majority of all of the members present and participating in the meeting. With 12 members present today, there needs to be at least eight affirmative votes to carry the motion forward. Thank you, um, Mr. Clerk. And seeing no further discussion, um, Please call the roll. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vita. No. Council Member Rainville. No. Council Member Goodman. No. Council Member Wansley. Aye. Council Member Osmond. Aye. Council Member Payne. Aye. Council Member Koski. Nay. Vice President Palmasano. No. President Jenkins. Nay. There are six ayes and six nays. That item fails. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I would. I would improve my community. I would improve my community. at this meeting. Members of the public have the opportunity to comment on city business. I would do that, sir. Yes, I would. We're, this project will not kill anyone. This project will not kill anyone, sir. This will serve as a general warning to those who will disrupt this meeting. I have advised that interference with the council's ability to conduct business will be removed. The public, the public may attend and observe these meetings. However, the law prohibits disruption and interference. Those who do so will be removed. I never asked you that, ma'am. We will, certainly. clear this uh, meeting so that we can continue our meeting. We stand in recess.
Colleagues, we are adjourning this meeting for 10 minutes. We're calling a recess. Calling the City Council meeting back in order. And clerk, please call the roll to verify the presence of a quorum. That's low. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Present. Member Chavez. Present. Council Member Ellison. Here. Council Member Vita. Present. Council Member Rainville. Present. Council Member Goodman. Present. Council Member Wansley. Present. Council Member Osman is absent. Council Member Payne. Present. Council Member Koski. Present. Vice President Palmasano. Present. President Jenkins. Present. There are 11 members. Oh, Council Member Osmond has joined. There are 12 members present. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, we do have a quorum. And our last item today under new business is a legislative directive by Council Member Chavez. Um, Council Member, would you like to speak to this motion? Uh, I'll make a brief, Council President Jenkins. This legislative directive basically helps our staff get in front of this council the exact uh, motion that we need to end the high water campus expansion project. So it's going to identify all prior associations that have been done with this project and allow this council to take a vote uh, to end the high water campus expansion project. And I'll just, there's folks on queue if they want to speak to that as well. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none. Second. Um, no one's in queue for discussion. Um, um, are you in queue, Council Member? Uh, Council Member Wansley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so I just want to give Council Member Chavez another uh, just pause for gratitude for giving us another opportunity to change course um, and make good on the promises that we've made by establishing the green zones, by trying to be a child-friendly city, by saying we want a safe and healthy and equitable place for all of our residents. Um, and this is a concrete step that we can take in service of that vision also in light of us still being under this uh, declaration of racism being a public health crisis um you know it gives us another opportunity to reconcile the past harm that our city has made towards indigenous people through racialized oppression land disposition and involuntary removal um and gives us the opportunity <coughs> to not continue these past tools of harm in the present moment so i just want to Thank you, Council Member Chavez, for giving us another opportunity. And I hope my colleagues are brave enough to take this opportunity to really do this reparative work that we're going to have to do regardless with our East Phillips uh, community. So just wanted to thank you. Thank you, Council Member Wansley. Uh, is there anyone else in queue? Uh, seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Shugtai. Aye. Council Member Chavez. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Vital. No. Council Member Rainville. No. Council Member Goodman. No. 
Councilmember Wansley. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Councilmember Koski. Nay. Vice President Palmasano. No. President Jenkins. Nay. There are six ayes and six nays. That motion fails. And with that, we have, I believe, concluded um, the agenda as it was amended and uh, seeing no further business before us today. And without objection, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>